Alright, so um, hub motor repair part two. I um, did a first one on a nine continent motor where the hall sensor wires and the hall sensor itself were bad. I had to do some replacements. Um, this is a Crystallite 407 that I use on my Norco at 100 volts. And um, it ran fine until my larger friend that weighs over 350 some pounds um, managed to get this hot enough that the magnets inside the motor spun free. The epoxy holding the magnets melted. The motor was literally billowing smoke out of the vent holes. Uh, but it still drove home. But the only problem is that when you time you hit the throttle, you had no grip. Uh, it would just spin internally. So to repair this, what I need to do after taking the motor apart, and I covered this in part one, is to remove the magnets from here. Now before you do that, grab a marker and number your magnets one through, in this case there's 16, it's a 16 magnet motor, um, so that when you put them back in, you get your polarity correct because each magnet has a polarity, there's a north, south, north, south, north, south, and if you get them wrong, the motor will not run correctly. Uh, for example, a little magnet here, you can see how it repels, pulls, repels, pulls, repels, pulls, repels, and that's one way to tell if ever you mix them up. But magnets are very brittle. You have to be careful with them and uh, handle them gently. I've already pulled three of them out. Um, using just my hands as much as possible now, you got to be really careful when you put them against each other because if they smash together, they will break. Can I crack some? Now, in some cases, they don't want to budge, so I've got a Motion Pro tire iron. If I very carefully put this behind the magnet and give it a, a twist, I can get them to budge. And once they budge, I can then pull them off. See what I mean? And it is so easy to break one. And once you actually do break a magnet, it repels itself. It doesn't create a north and a south that attract. You end up with two norths or two souths. I'm not sure which one way, but they become impossible to put back together in one piece. Uh, I haven't figured out how anyway. Now you definitely don't want to stack these magnets. Keep them separate. Because if you were to put them all above each other, you will have a nightmare of a time getting them apart. And you probably will break them and pinch your fingers. You can see the old epoxy, whatever crystallite used to hold them on. Did not hold up. Ah, here's an example of just one of those little thin shims. Um, I'll need to find something similar in thickness to put back in there to make up the gap. Now, um, something very important. When you're working with epoxy, and to glue the magnets back on, I'll be using some Scotch Weld DP420. I'm sure there are better glues out there to do the job, but this happens to be what I have on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. And uh, before you try and paint or epoxy or do anything like that, you want to make sure that the surface is completely clean of all grease, grime, oil, fingertips, whatever. Using solvent, this is just lighter fluid. You could use rubbing alcohol or alcohol or anything will do really. But the uh, goal here is to get the surface of what you plan to stick as clean as you possibly can. I have cleaned the hub motor, cleaned it all up with solvent. I don't want to touch this again because I don't want to put fingerprints on it. I have cleaned all my 16 magnets with solvent and gloves. In the process, all my numbers went away, so I took a marker and put the numbers back on in case I start laying magnets down and I forget which direction I was going. At least I have numbers on my magnets to make sure I keep going in the right order. Um, the shims that I found on some of the magnets 
Apparently we're between every magnet and that's the result or the reason why the motor was smoking. These um, little paper, whatever they are, caught fire inside the motor between each magnet and vaporized because I can see on the stator that's in the garage blue residue on both sides of the motor which means they just fell apart into the motor and got chewed up. Um, so the magnets are okay, the stator is fine, um, the hub is okay, I just need to put the magnets back in and add some new shims. And to do that I simply use some uh, bristle board, like just cardboard, and I cut little strips. Uh, I estimate I'll need two of these per magnet. That should allow for the proper spacing. Uh, hopefully you won't end up with a big mess by the end of this. But I've got as ready as I could. I put a plastic bag inside my bucket. I have a piece of parchment paper to lay my epoxy on. I've got my epoxy and the tool that I use to push the tubes up because I don't have the 3M epoxy gun thing that I should have, but anyway, it's fine. Um, also got some wooden dowels or toothpicks to spread the glue. And a big box of gloves. Uh, Costco, 10 bucks, 100 gloves, worth every penny. Now, I'm as ready as I can be, or as I can conceive to be, um, and famous last words because it always goes horribly wrong before you've done this, but um, we'll see how it goes. What I want to do here is discard a little bit from the end of the tube. Okay, so now... I kind of have to guess how much you're going to use here. But I want to mix more than I need so that I don't run out halfway through the job. <clears throat> okay, so now... So I've got a whole 20 minutes to uh, get this job done, which should be more than enough time. Between each magnet, I'm and putting in a couple of these paper shims. talking about earlier, it's extremely difficult to work with this stuff. Because everything being made of iron causes your magnets to stick everywhere. So lots of paper towels and a garbage can on the ready. Try and keep the epoxy spread to a minimum. Um, Probably not a bad idea halfway through just to dispose of your gloves and put some fresh ones on. Word of caution, um, <laughs> this is a very dangerous thing to do because there's a lot of iron in here and when you get close to the magnets it wants to snap in. So keep your fingers clear, don't ever go at the magnets like this, you will lose your fingertips. Um, and I guarantee you a trip to the hospital. So I normally brace the motor against something solid so it doesn't go anywhere. Line up the axle and about a bit. And she goes. So that's why you don't want to have your fingers in there. So that's where I want them to be. Like that. Ooh. Looks like it's going to work. 
And I put a dab of blue Loctite on these screws because they have a tendency to want to come loose. And it's always a good idea to um, only put a couple of threads in every screw first. Because some of these are a tight fit, and if you get everything or the first bolt you put in, if you bolt it down tight, you're going to have a hard time with all the other ones. Dead stop, nice and smooth.